Today. My prayer is God. I want God to raise people. And then I've been using Tendo Andres. Mama. Tendo Andres Mama. So today also Mama will preach. Let's allow Mama to preach. God bless you. Use my mic, Mama. Hallelujah. Can we all stand up just to sing one small worshiping song? Hallelujah. Can you tell that person close to you, say, welcome to the house of the Lord. My daughter said it's a house of opportunities. Hallelujah. Amen. So I believe opportunities are coming our way in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us raise our hands and we worship. Mayete, Mayete, Mayete Ngosia. Mayete, Mayete, Mayete Ngosia. Oh, Mayete, Mayete, Mayete. the Lord.
the Lord, my God, my Father, creator of heaven and earth, your majesty, king of glory, author and finisher of my faith, God almighty, the one who was, is, and is to come, the soon coming king, the reigning king, God, you are holy, God, you are worthy. God, you are faithful. Almighty God, blessed be unto the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We can all sit down in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I greet you all in Jesus' name? Can I greet you all in Jesus' name? Can you please? Is Daddy's mic? Hallelujah. I believe we are all happy to be in the house of the Lord, isn't it? I really want to, first of all, thank my beloved husband, my permanent boyfriend to believe in his wife you know it's an opportunity that is very much rare to find your husband saying um, I want you to go and preach and I, I said to him yes and as days are going by he will ask me it's kind of it's like you are not even preparing you're not doing what I told you. I just said, no, I, I, I have done it already. And he said, okay. And I do believe that he believes that I've done it. Hallelujah. But what I want to thank this handsome man for is his faith in the Lord. My husband loves the Lord. And I believe that is why all of us we are following suit. And another thing I want to, to thank him for is for him to make me to look beautiful all the month of August. So, Annie, I want to thank you. God must really bless you for what you are doing for me. Yesterday night when we were coming from, uh, you know, yesterday children were celebrating. When we went home, Daddy, we went outside. We were just standing our house is somehow, you won't understand. I won't speak much about it. So Daddy was saying, can you see there? I said, yes, I can see. Can you see there? I said, yes, I can see. And he said again, can you see there? 
I said, yes, I can see. And he said to me, I believe these are blessings of all these Christians that are not serious. Hey. I said, why are you saying so? He said, ah, they are not taking it, so we are going to take it. I said, oh God. And they know that the God that we are serving is a God that is faithful. It's a God that never lets down his children. Hallelujah. Are you ready to listen to the word of God? Okay, let us open our Bibles. I will link the Bible chapter. Let us open the word of God. I won't just start by telling you what I'm going to speak about. I just want to start by a good introduction of something that is happening in our lives. Matthew chapter 11. Verse 28. Are you there? Can I read? It says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. And learn from me, that is Jesus speaking. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Let us pray. Father, thank you for this word you have given to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Where we just read, we are hearing about an invitation. Can you tell somebody invitation? Here yeah, Jesus is speaking words of inviting people to come to him. Why must people come to him? Why? Because in him, he is light and gentle, and we have to learn from him. And again, let us come and carry his yoke. Because now, the yoke that we are carrying right now is heavy for us. The Bible says, come to me all that are laboring. Bari itapishan. And those who are heavily laden, Baba Imeluang, come to me, I will give you rest. And when you find rest, you will then start to learn from me what I do. And when you learn from me, you will then realize or learn that you must take my yoke so that you can be able to do what I, the Lord, is doing. In other words, we cannot do what the Lord is doing if we didn't take his yoke. When you are still heavily laden, or you still have troubles, or you still have some other things, you can never be able to emulate him because you are still on the other side hallelujah hallelujah then Jesus said to the people the disciples now take my yoke the yoke that I am having miracle Come and take it. Because my own is light. It's not like the one you are having when you are still on earth. 
When you are still on earth, the only thing that you meet in life is trouble, sorrows, crying, tears, all these kind of things. But Jesus here is saying, when you take my yoke, my whole yoke is so, so light. Hallelujah. And what do we do when we are having the yoke of the Lord? We copy. Not everyone. Him. Can somebody say amen? amen? Now can you ask the person that is close to you, whom are you copying? Jesus wants us to copy him. Learn from him. He says his father is love, so we must also love, and so we must love each other. We are copying him. Why? Because he came down to earth so that he can come and make this great invitation to mother earth, to everyone that is on earth. Come, all ye unto me. Can you tell the person that is close to you, you are invited? So now, as I was reading this word, I said, if Jesus, he himself, is inviting us, where we are going, where we are supposed to be, there are many benefits. Hmm? He cannot just invite us where there are no benefits. When you are invited to a wedding like what we saw, it means Rio Janam. Asinete. Hmm? We are going to enjoy. Now Jesus here is inviting us. Why? Because he wants us to have the benefits of where he is inviting us. Where Jesus is inviting us, there is a lot of blessings. Hallelujah. There is a lot of things that are happening. Let us look at the life of Jesus. He healed the sick. He did miracles everywhere. Sometimes he will be walking, he will just disappear. Sometimes he will be with people, he just pray, look to heaven, and there will be a lot of food in front of people. Don't you want to live that kind of life? Jesus said to us, now, come and take this yoke and follow me and do what I do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't want to speak too much about the invitation. We have heard about the invitation. Now, let's go to the book of Psalms 46. Read verse 1. It says, God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Can I repeat it? God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. So I was just speaking about invitation. Memo. Card. Yawu memiwa. Kamarena Jesu. To come and follow him. To come and learn from him. Jesus said one day, nobody knows me except the father. Because I come from the father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now he is speaking about God, the father, who sent Jesus. And the Bible is saying he is our refuge. He is our strength. Our present help in times of trouble. The invitation said, come ye unto me, all of you who are heavy laden. Now the Bible here is saying, if you are troubled, God, the father of Jesus who invited us, he is our help. Now I want to say, to speak with you today, 
God, our helper. We have been invited, children of God. The only thing that we need to do is to learn from Jesus. The only thing that we have to try to do is to learn what Jesus was doing on earth. If he was loving, let us love. If he was healing, let us heal. If he was always happy, let us be happy. If he was always doing things, let us do the same. Why? Because we are with him in the invitation that we got. Hallelujah. Now the Lord is my refuge. My help during times of trouble. When I am troubled, God help me. Because he is my helper. When Jesus invited us, I said in the beginning, there are a lot of benefits. Number one, refuge. Number two, strength. Three, he is our helper. Who is your helper? Hallelujah. Can you ask the person that is close to you, who is your helper? That is why when, when you have trouble, you have a problem, you call your brothers and sisters, you sit down, you speak with them. You are making a mistake. You were supposed to be calling God your helper. When you have trouble, problems, you go to your workplace, you start speaking with people that you work with. Hey, you are making a problem. You have a helper. In times of trouble. You need God to help you. If you allow God to help you, I am telling you that trouble that is troubling you, God is going to trouble it. Because the Bible is saying, He is our refuge. When things are happening, we run to Him. You don't ask why, we don't ask when, you don't ask why, you don't ask what's going to happen next. You just run to Him and say, Father, help. Oh. I need help. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now the problem that we as Christians are having is understanding, wisdom, reasoning capacity. We relate, you level, you, you, you measure the things of God according to understanding. When you are now in the kingdom because you have accepted the invitation. You no longer reason the way you used to reason. Mgiri Jesu will learn from me. We now reason the way Jesus reason. We now do things the way Jesus does them. We now walk the way Jesus walk. That is why the Bible says this book must never depart from you. Because when Jesus was on earth, he was always relating to the Father, communicating with the Father. And we as children of God, when we are here, whom are we communicating with? Amen. Our friendship with the Father does not have roots. Hmm? Can you say amen? Amen. Sihwera, Sarina, Limudimas Namidu. It does not have roots. How got to a worry? Okay, we. On a linga, why did you la dia sepil? Wana moe. You have forgotten that you are born again. You have forgotten that you are a child of God. And I started asking myself, why now the Bible is saying God is our help? Our refuge, our strength. Why are we weak? Hmm? Why are we so weak? I never had some time where I heard the Bible saying, and Jesus was so weak, they have to, kick, to go collect water from him. Hmm? Bapulus. But he is saying he himself, learn. Learn from me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you tell the person that is close to you, learn from the Lord. Amen. Jesus always relied in his father. Hmm? He will have time 
to go aside himself. Sit down alone there. Or kneel down alone there. Pray. Talk with the father. Mm, father. Mm, what is it that I'm going to do today, tomorrow? Father, how do I go about this? When you find Jesus doing things, you will never find him or by the Bible saying, he knelt down and prayed and he lifted up his hands and he shouted. The only shout that I heard is Talitaku. Hmm? And he said Talitaku. Why There were so many people who were making noise and they were not believing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now if we can start to learn what Jesus was, the way he was, child of God, I'm telling you, there will be no trouble that we won't be able to go out of, that we won't be able to solve, that we won't be able to run away from. Why? Because refuge is there. There is somewhere to run to. You will be amazed to find Christians not understanding what they are doing. My God. Do you know that there are Christians who don't know what they are doing? If you want to know, can you ask the person that is close to you, why are you in church today? And say, answer me. Uri. Hmm? Uri ingi. What do you want? I believe we are here because we are here to worship. We are here to give praises to the Lord. We are here to acknowledge him. We are here to bless his name. But the Bible is saying he is our help. No need. No need for us to be afraid anymore. We have a helper. Let us go down the close to, the, to verse number 10. In the same chapter. Verse 10 say, are you there? Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Hallelujah. It says, be still. Humula. See, know that I, the Lord, am your God. And the last verse that we read says, God, the same one that is saying, be still is our help. Now what we have to do as children of God from wide, far and wide what we have to do be still humula too. Have your own time to speak with your God. Have your own time to meditate about what he said. And know that he is God. When you start to do all this thing, be still, know I am God. You find peace in your heart. God said he is my helper. The Lord said he is my refuge. I am not weak, he has given me strength. Now the Lord God Almighty, the same one that was working with Jesus Christ, that was working with Jesus Christ, the same father of Jesus Christ is the same we are saying now, I am your God. Amen. Now if he has loved us this much, so said the Bible, 
that he sended Jesus so that we can learn from Jesus and that we enter into friendship. We enter into covenant with Jesus and we start learning from him. It means whatever the father was doing for Jesus, the father will also do for me. Whatever words he was saying to Jesus, the father will say same to me. If God really loved Jesus, I believe God loves me. If God really loved the world, I believe he loved me. That's why he's saying here, I will be exalted. How exalted? Through you. Through me. Through what we are doing. Following him, learning from him, hoping in him. When things are happening, we keep quiet. Look upon him. Believe that he will answer. Whatever that is troubling me, God is going to help me. This problem that I have, God will help me. Whatever that I don't have, God will give me. Why? Because he is my helper. Tafita once said, I believe we all learned this psalm at school. I don't know these days. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Even when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil because he's with me. Hmm? He always walks with us. Now the thing that we have to do, children of God, can we maintain this relationship? Oh, this relationship is good. This friendship is good. It has a lot of benefits. Hallelujah. Can you tell the person that is close to you, there are a lot of benefits. The Bible says, let the weak in the Lord say I'm strong. It says here, yeah, he is our strength. And the Bible says, by his stripes I am healed. Uh -uh. He is our healer. He is God and all in us. But let us keep the covenant. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now let's go to the book of Hebrews. Now we know. Hey, he is our refuge. God, my strength, my help. Let us go to the book of Hebrews chapter 13. Let us go and read verse 5 and verse 6. Are you there? Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. Can you tell the person that is because of be content with what you have? For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So, that we, Rina, may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says, let your conduct be without covetousness. So go miabaru. Let it be not without covetousness. And be content. Can you tell the person that is close to you? Be content. Say again, be content. Khotofal. With such things as you have. The little that you have, be content. Hmm? 
Whatever you are holding by your own hands, be content. Whatever that God has granted unto you right now, be content. Whatever that God is doing in your life right now, be content. Why? Because he's the author and the finisher. He knows your beginning before you begin. He knows even where you are going. So that is why he in the Bible is saying, be content with what you are having now. Why? Because God, God, the Lord, is our helper. Mm. There is nothing that will never happen in our lives if we are holding on unto him. The problem is we don't know all the unto him. We don't hold on unto him. We hold on unto things. And the things I want to tell you, they will pass. They will come, they will go. And you will be left there. Now it's better for you to be content. Can you tell the person that is close to be content to? Be content with everything, whatever that you are holding. Whatever that God has granted to you right now. Because no, God knows the future before you all goes to the future. He know where you are going. Now you will find us now starting to say, Zwanga zwifani na zwamahangwe. My own is not like other people's things. You want your own to be like whose things? Because that same person you are comparing yourself to is not the person that created you. It's not the same person that gave his life for you. It's not the same person that gave promises in your life. It's not the same person that said unto you, I will be with you all the days of your life. Now it is better for you to trust in the Lord and believe that he will come to your rescue by the appointed time. He will come and help you by the right time. He will do things for you by the right time. Why? Because he knows the beginning from the ending he is our helper all the days of our life of our lives god is watching over us that is why verse 7 6 the lord is my helper when you are content with what you have, when you are situated, when you are good with wherever you are and whatever what is happening around you, then you will be able to say, oh, the Lord is my helper. Amen. And then you will be able to say the second stanza, the next word. What will men do unto me? What will you do unto me? Hmm? Can you speak boldly? What will you, I'm not saying the person that is close to you is wrong, but I tell the person, what will you do unto me? Because the one who's helping me is there up. There are so many things that are happening in our lives these days. I was with my son-in-law yesterday. You were seated there by the corner. I laughed a lot. I was saying, hey, you guys, your jobs. Mm -mm. I don't want to work your jobs. Ah, to be a pastor is better. And he said to me, mama, pastor, they are always talking about you. I said, hey, but you are right. But it needs you when you come face to face with those kind of situations. You remember who is the one to help you in that situation. Amen. Our problem is we trust in chariots and in people. We trust in things. Right now, these days that we are living in, we trust in money. Hmm? If you don't have money, you are nothing. Let me tell you, even if you don't have money, you are everything in the eyes of the Lord. If you cannot do one, two, three for yourself, 
are you are nothing. This age that we are living in, we forget that we are in the road. We are walking. We are learning from somebody. We are emulating somebody who was sent by God from heaven so that he can come to earth and die for us. After dying for us, he goes back to heaven and watch over us when he's there. And when he is there in heaven, he is always reminding, reminding the father, I have died for them. Have mercy on them. I died for him. Lord, have mercy on him. I have died for him. He intercedes on our behalf. So that is why God always will never stop answering our prayers. The problem that we have is we look at the time frame. Time frame. Um, 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 came to Charis in two years time he got a job. In three years time he had a car. In four years time he had a house. In five years time now he is married. Do you want to be like whom whom? Do you know the troubles that that person is meeting? If you can go close and ask the Lord, Lord, why is this and this and that not happening to me? God was supposed to answer us and give us the right answer. It is because where he is going is not where you are going. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Is God your helper? He is ready to help you. Amen. Maybe you have been sick for whatever time, for a very long time. No, maybe your life has been stagnant for a very long time. Maybe your things are not going on in the way you wanted them to go. Don't make them to go the way you want. Make them to go the way God wants. If you can start doing that, oh, your things will be beautiful. Most of the time I love to sing this song, Tatoya Hao, Morena, Ipetere. Last week we were singing it here in the church and I was saying to the church how me your daughter me your son and must be different with others. Amen. When I'm walking people must see that a son of God is walking. A child of God is walking. A child of God has appeared. A child of God has entered. There must be a shifting of authority when you enter into a place. Why? Because when you walk, God is walking. When you do things, God is right there. Helping you in different ways, in ways that you cannot see. Right now we are here in church. We don't know how many angels are sitting close to us. Because our eyes, they are so, so, so full of flesh. We cannot even recognize. But if God can open our spiritual eyes, we will know that God is always busy with us. Fighting for us. Speaking for us. Erasing some stuffs for us. Sometimes some stuffs, when they are erased, we go back and we take them. We come here in church for deliverance. And we are being prayed for in Jesus' mighty name. And we go back home. When I reach home, two or three days, I've forgotten. I follow the same thing that I said I've been delivered from. Now, how do you want God to help you? Hmm? Because he's been helping you in one and the same thing time and time and time again. But you still go back to the same place. God is our helper. He is close to you. I don't know if you feel him, but I feel him close to me. I don't know if you see him, but I believe he's right here close to me. I don't know if you understand what he does, but I believe he's right here helping me and you to understand his will upon our lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
God is our helper. Allow me to speak a little bit in my own language. I will interpret myself. When God is your helper, you don't need to help yourself. When God is your helper, don't try to help yourself. The Bible says you must be still. Sit down over there for. And when now people, when they are laughing, saying whatever they are saying, doing whatever they are doing, just say, ah, how can I stand up when I have got people to help me? There are angels around me who are helping me. It's always like this. When you have a house, like you false, you are waking, isn't it? Hmm? And you have helpers in your houses, isn't it? So that when you go to work, when you come back, your house is clean, it's neat. Everything is in order. These people are helping you. Ne? Now, if you have a helper and you go to work 6 o'clock in the morning, can you wake up 5 o'clock in the morning and start cleaning the house? Why? Eh? There is a helper. Okay, sharp. Now, this is a question to ask Christians. God said himself, come unto me because you've got loads because you've got troubles because you are heavy laden and I the Lord will give you rest now when you reach Christianity when you start becoming the child of God when you start being the son of the living God instead of you sitting down and relax you start going asking questions starting helping yourself because they said it. The wife of Makanisa is wearing six rings because they are occultic rings. You are starting to help yourself, asking things around, hmm? wanting to know what is happening. I'm telling you, child of God, you'll be lost. Hmm? You'll be lost, seriously lost. Because immediately you start asking, you have taken the seat of the Lord. The Lord is the one to go around sending angels to ask, search for you, ask for you. Mama, what is it that is happening in your life? And when you are praying the Father, my problem is my legs are painful, help me, oh God. And the Bible says he also know, he even knows what we want to pray before we pray. Now when the angels come to ask around, asking you, you will be down in prayer speaking with the Father. And now when the angels go back, they go tell the Father, legs, her legs are painful, Lord. And the Lord said, I will heal her. Because she trusts in me. I will do one, two, three. Because she seeks for what I have to say. If you have God as a helper, children of God, why are you helping yourself? Why are we helping ourselves? Why don't we sit down and relax? When you have people who are helping you in the house, you don't work. Like me, I don't work. I've got to help us. Why do I have to work? Now, why are you working? You have God Almighty, your helper. God came down to your level to help you. When you get into that, what do we call it? Interview room. He is there with you. Right there in that problem, he is there with you. Right there when you are saying, I'm hungry, he is there with you. As long as we maintain that beautiful relationship. 
Why has God left our presence? It is because our relationship is sour. Ausa namnat sour. That is why we find ourselves troubled with one thing time and again. But now today I want you to believe that we have God a helper. This problem that I have, the trouble that I have today is over with it. Whatever problem that is troubling me, it's over with it today. Why? Because God is going to help me out of this situation. God is going to solve my problem because God is going to walk inside with me and go out with me. He has loved me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we go to the book of Pisal? It says, Behold, God is my helper. The Lord is with those who uphold my life. Meaning, who sustain my life. Behold, God is my helper. The Lord is with those who uphold my life. Meaning those who sustain my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says God is my helper. And when there is anybody that is helping me in anything in my life, God the Lord will be the one to sustain the same. God is our helper and is helping us in many, many different ways. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you tell the person that is close to you, God is helping us in many different ways. God is standing with us in many different ways. Why? Because the Bible says, yes, it's saying, when there is anybody who upholds me, who sustains me, God will also lift us, lift the same person. Meaning help the same person. Now it means it's good for us to help others when they are in need. So that God can also help us. Hallelujah. God is our helper and he sustains us. God is our helper and he moves with us. God is our helper and he's always with us. Hallelujah. Can you tell the person that is close to you? God is my help. I will fear nothing. God is working with me. I will fear nobody. God is standing with me. I will fear nothing. Because in everything that I am doing, God is always making sure that I have what I am searching for. Or I reach where I'm going. Or I do things the way I am supposed to do them. Because he's right there helping me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lastly, let us go to the book of Psalm 121. Revelation verse 1. It says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. And verse 2 said, my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. I will lift up my eyes. That's David saying. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. Where on the hills? Where my help comes from? Because my help cometh from the Lord. The Lord who made heaven and made earth. 
Can you tell the person that is close to you? He made the heaven. And he made the earth. In other words, he knows everything about the heaven and about the earth. That is why he can also help me and you. In whatever situation we are coming across. David was saying all these words. The Lord is my helper. Because God has been with him since he was a young boy. If you can go to the book of Samuel, I believe it's first Samuel, and you read about his story, you will hear him being anointed amongst his brothers when he was still young. When Samuel came to the family because God descended him to go anoint king after Saul. And when he reached there, Samuel, he called for all the young men, all the boys of the family. And all of them came. Now when all of them came and no one was found amongst them, Samuel yet asked again, is there no one left? Hmm? David saw God from young age. Is there no one left? And Jesus said, there is another one. Another one. Hey, he's not even here. Hey. And Samuel said, call him. Because we cannot sit down before he comes. And when he comes, God says to Samuel the prophet, stand up and anoint him. He is the one I have chosen. God chose David. Now David here in this chapter is saying, I, the only thing that I know is to lift my eyes up to the hills because I know from the hills that's where my help comes from. From the hills that's where everything about me happens. From the hills that's where everything about me comes to pass. I was not supposed to be king if it was not from above. I was not supposed to be where I am if it was not from above. He was chosen when his brothers were there. If you can go down reading the same chapter that we have read. It says, he says going down, he will not even allow my feet to be moved. This God. Why? Because he is my helper. My help is all about him. That is why by the time when he was supposed to go fight Goliath, he was able to do it. Why? He was having a helper. The stone that he threw that day was having anointing. Are you understanding me? Everything that David does was having and because he was anointed. Now, if you have a close, beautiful relationship with the Father, God is always there, close, close, close to you. Very close. There is nothing that will ever trouble you. Can somebody say amen? There is nothing that will ever defeat you. The Lord is my helper says David. You can also say today as a child of God, the Lord is my helper. Whom shall I fear? Hmm? Whom shall I fear? Let, us, let me leave them do what they are doing. But one day God will come to my refuge. Let me leave them speak what they are speaking one day. Hey. God will come to my refuge. He will answer. Let me allow them do what they are doing. But one day, God, my God, will appear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our help only comes 
from the Lord. From the name of the Lord. From the power that God has given unto us. When we cling to it, anything and everything that we want, we will get. But let us not look at time. Let us hope and trust in him. Let us believe that God will help us. Many of us here, we have got problems. Matata. Many problems. But we don't know how to solve them. Let me tell you a secret. The Lord is your helper. Things are not going your way at work. Things are not happening the way you were thinking. He is your helper. Right now you are sick. Lions will be laid on you so that you become healed. Don't look at the time. He's still working good things in your life. He's your helper. Sometimes, sometimes many of us, we take long. Like what I said in the we take long in achieving things. They did one day say it is because God has allowed challenges to come into our lives. And then we take time, we take time. Why? Because we are still in the university of God. And God is still taking out some things in our lives. And in the right time, God is going to place us where we are supposed to. God is our helper. Leave searching for help from people. People will never take you anywhere. There is only one helper that we have been given. God Almighty. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We can come here cry. We can come here shout. We can come here scream. We can come here do all kind of things. But the time of God is the one that will stand. Amen. If it was said by 19 or 20, 22, Eunice, this and this will happen in your life. It will happen even though you don't want, but it will happen. Because it was said by God. If God has said in your life during this time, what and what will happen in your life? It will happen even though they try to wish you. It won't work. Hey, we Christian of today. We are very much afraid of being wished. We are very, very much afraid of things happening in our lives. Immediately something happened in our lives. You start praying uh, the prayer, they call it the prayer of war. Hmm? Prayer of war. Whom are you fighting? Remember I told you in the beginning, you have a helper. You don't worry, you sit down. You relax, you speak with your father, tell him, he knows even before you tell him, and he'll come to your rescue. You wait for him to answer, he's your helper, he'll come and rescue you. He's your refuge, he'll come and stand for you. He gives you strength, he will come and give you power to sustain you. He will never allow you to fall. The Bible says he never sleeps. He never slumber. And he does not stop to answer our prayers. He is always time in return, answering prayers each and every day. But let us not go out from the will of God. And we think when we are out there, God will still answer same like when we were still inside. We have been given an invitation to come and enter. And he will be our helper. Let us allow him to help us. To allow your fast is stop going up and down, searching for help. Nobody will help you. Your auntie cannot, your mom, your father, your uncle, your brothers, your sisters cannot. But there's only one helper who can the Lord God Almighty. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want us to believe 
in God who helps. Let us believe in God who can take us to places. Who can move you from this place to another? Who can take you from one to 25? And you break all protocols that are here. If it is sad for you to reach there, you must be what, 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 what. But God takes you there, not because you have, even though you don't have. Why? Because he is there to speak on your behalf. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you tell the person that is close to you, do you know, do you believe that God is your helper? I want us to stand up. Can you tell the person that is close to you, God is your helper. He is going to help you today. God is your refuge. He is going to hide you today. God is your strength. He will put you under his wings today. He is going to hide you today. He is going to strengthen you today. What is it that you want?